Hey, Raymond here from the Beginner Photography Podcast, and today I'm going to show you how to take a good photo. So let's get into it. You bought a DSLR because you want to take better photos than what you can take with your cell phone. I'm guessing you opened up your new camera, started taking photos, and were a bit underwhelmed, right? Probably thinking, why isn't this camera taking good photos? Well, today I'm going to show you how to take a good photo. Disclaimer, there is no magic button, secret menu option, or simple fix that will make you take a good photo. It takes work, and I'm going to show you the steps that you need to take to put in that work. So if you're not interested in working hard for something that you want, well then you can just leave now. If you're still here, good, you made the right choice. And this time next month, or next year from now, you will be so proud of yourself. So here we go. Step one, take more photos. Have you seen that movie Moneyball with Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt plays the general manager of the failing Oakland A's, looking to turn the team around into a winner. Jonah Hill plays the assistant general manager, and he suggests not swinging to get a home run every time, but simply just to get on first base. The more batters at the plate who are able to get on first will advance the rest of the team home, scoring runs, winning the team the game. Shooting more photos is the exact same strategy. There's no need to swing for the fences every time here. Simply by taking more photos, you are increasing your chances of getting a keeper. So bring your camera with you everywhere. Shoot everything. See what the world looks like at a high angle. See what the world looks like from a low angle. See what the world looks like when you get super close to your subject and completely fill the frame. See what the world looks like when you take 10 steps back and give context. Play with composition. Do you like how your photos look when you keep your subject directly in the center of the frame? Or do you like how your photos look better when you have your subject off to the right? The more photos you take, the more keepers you will get. Just be sure to be deliberate about the photos you are taking and not just squeezing the shutter button, hoping for the best. Step two, learn what your gear can do. Your camera might not feel like it, but it's an amazing piece of equipment when you know exactly how to use it. Entry-level camera gear does have some limitations though, so go out and find those limitations. Test all the autofocus modes and find which ones work best for portraits or landscapes or moving subjects, everything. Only when you know what your camera can't do can you know what your camera can do. Then just play your camera strengths. If you know that your camera won't focus on your subject when the sun is right behind it, you will know that before you take the photo and you will have to step to the side and get a better angle so that your camera will be able to uh, excel in that situation. Gear will never make you a better photographer, but it can make your job easier. Step three, get out. Go to a state park or a zoo or on vacation. When you put yourself in a setting that you are not familiar with, your brain will be firing on all cylinders. You will have a heightened sense of awareness to things that you may have not seen before. On top of that, these places usually offer scenery that you might not be used to seeing and it will let you capture more unique photos while practicing with your camera and becoming more confident and comfortable with your buttons and settings. If you're on vacation, try to take a day excursion. Uh, photograph your kids building sandcastles or your dog catching a crab or even that beautiful waterfall or field of sunflowers on the side of the road. Step four. Educate yourself. Okay, so you've been bringing your camera with you everywhere you go, and you've been snapping thousands of photos, and you can see that your photos are getting better, but you feel like you've kind of hit a wall. You've got as good as you can be by just being self-taught. You're ready for the next step, and that's education. Ten years ago, the only photography education was either in person or in books, and today, because of the internet, we have so many more resources. From YouTube tutorials, blog posts, and obviously podcasts, there's no shortage of uh, ways to learn photography. I personally love watching YouTube videos. Seeing what is happening makes more sense to me than trying to imagine it. But podcasts offer something completely unique and different. Since podcasts are audio and you can't see images, podcasts usually focus on the story or the experiences of other photographers to help you grow. Because even though knowing your camera settings is essential, a photo is more than just the sum of its settings. And if you are looking for a list of the top 21 photography podcasts, I've left a link in the description below to a blog post written by the wonderful people over at Fuel Your Photos. Step five, share your photos. I don't mean to just post them on Facebook or Instagram, and that's important, sure, but you wanna share your photos in a way that will get you constructive criticism. No matter how good or how bad your photos are, your family will always give you a biased review because they love you. 
To grow, it is important to get feedback from others, preferably other photographers. They will have an eye for details and composition, and they should be able to give you actionable feedback. Sometimes all your photo needs to take it from eh to wow is a simple crop or a white balance change. Join meetup.com and meet other local photographers. Become a part of the community. As a bonus, they often have fun photography outings. If you're not ready to meet other photographers in person, join a Facebook group or two. Really find one that is compassionate and understanding that every photographer is on a different path in their journey, but we're just all learning together. That's the exact community mindset that I've built over at the Beginner Photography Podcast's Facebook group. It is a safe place where no one is going to belittle you or tell you that your photos are garbage and then just walk away. It's full of love and support no matter how much you know or don't know about photography. And if you're interested in joining the Beginner Photography Podcast Facebook group, I've left another link in the description below. Just click it. All you gotta do is answer two questions and you can join. Step six, experiment. Now that you have been educating yourself from other podcasts, YouTube videos, and various blogs, uh, you've been sharing your work with your in-person friends or your online community, it's time to break out of that cocoon and spread those wings creatively. This is where you start to experiment with new techniques or photo ideas. Just as shooting in a new or a foreign location can open your mind to new ideas and processes, experimenting with your photography will do exactly the same. Try shooting at night, find the challenges, and then learn to overcome them. Just because there's no light does not mean that you can't create any. Learn to use your flash in the daytime to overpower the sun or backlight your subject. Or remove light and learn to master the silhouette. Rent a new lens and see what it can do. If you have all zoom lenses, rent a prime lens. A prime lens is a lens that does not zoom. It's only one focal length. Or rent a really wide angle lens. Use a long exposure. Long exposures let in more light, so they're a must for nighttime. But shooting a long exposure during the day can completely transform the way that you see the world. Try shooting a creek or the waves of a beach shore. Or clouds. With a long exposure like five or 10 seconds, you could be amazed at what you find. Do something that you're not used to, get a new perspective, and keep those synapses firing. Step seven, start editing your photos. Recently in the Beginner Photography Podcast Facebook group, we had a discussion on editing. Some members thought that editing your photos is not true photography as you should be skilled enough to capture the image that you want in camera. And sure, there's some merit to that. The better of a photographer that you are, the closer to perfect you can get in camera, meaning without editing. But if we look back even to the film days, photos are still edited. You could completely change the look of a photo by changing how long the film is in the developer liquid for. This is still a form of editing, but it's not full manipulation. Oftentimes I take simple edits to put my signature on a photo. I like my greens to look a little bit more foresty than limey. I like a little bit of extra contrast. I like my photos slightly overexposed. These are things that are not completely altering the integrity of the photo, but perhaps fixing a mistake or putting on my signature. Once you have completed all these steps, you should be able to consistently take a good photo. Maybe not every photo that you take will be a good one. Hell, I've been shooting for more than a decade now, and I still look at some of the photos that I take and wonder what the hell I was thinking when I took them. But I do take a ton more keepers now than I did when I first started photography. And photography is a lifelong journey, you know, it's not something that you can master in a weekend or even in a decade. I hope that by continuing to grow my skills as a photographer, that this time next year, I will be taking even more keepers than I am today. And that process should continue forever. For those of you watching who are brand new and maybe want to jumpstart into taking better photos, I have put a link in the description below for our free 14 day video course, Photography Basics for Beginners, 14 Days to Better Photos. Every day you're gonna get a brand new video in your inbox teaching you something new about photography to help excel your skills. That's it, I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. I come out with new videos like this all the time as well as every Monday I post a new interview with a professional photographer telling you the stories of how they became a professional to help you speed up your photography journey. All right, that's it for today. Again, I am Raymond from the Beginner Photography Podcast and I will see you next time.